There's definite shift in the way the influencers monetize this social media influence. There are only so much room for your t-shirts and the hoodies before you run out of space. So if you're thinking about as an investor or a business person who to partner with, actually working with the YouTube creators might be the next big step for you. Welcome to the Here's channel. My name is Tahir and yes, in today's video, I wanna talk about how one of the top two most popular YouTubers broadening the horizons of what is possible for other YouTubers and creatives, other opportunities for someone like you if you're in the business or in the investment world on how to partner with those creators. And yes, while everyone is at it, how to thicken the wallets of all the parties involved. Let's do this. David Dobrik, who is technically a TikToker, at least for the past year, is back to reclaim his YouTube throne. And in his latest video update about his new house, he made an announcement that a lot of people glanced over, but I think will pave a way for a lot of creators when it comes to completely changing the way the media is consumed across all the different genres. I know it's been a while, I'm sorry it's taken so long, but here it is, in this room, it's my baby. I'm so excited about it. It's my podcast studio! And this is what it looks like when it's the actual Sit down, sit down. Jesus sorry, Christ. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Um, I wanted to be able to post on YouTube um, at least once a week, and I wanted to take the podcast to this whole video thing. They hear, but podcasters have been uploading the video versions of their podcasts for a little while now. Joe Rogan have been doing it for the past 10 years. Yes. It's nothing new, but this is not the group of people who I want to compare someone like David Dobrik and his viewed podcast to. Their direct comparison for David Dobrik today is Jimmy Kimmel, Fallon, all those late night TV show hosts who are essentially slowly becoming obsolete. Yes, I said it. Think about the audience who David Dobrik holds through his vlogs, yes, but they're slowly following him through other social media channels, including the TikTok and the podcast applications where they would consume the views. For them, this new video format, if you look at the setup, is essentially the late night TV show where there's David Dobrik, a couple of his essentially posse co-hosts who help him riff off on jokes and keep the conversation going, and then they bring in the celebrities for the interviews. This is the format that is now essentially transitioning from the late night TV over to YouTube and the generation of people who grew up watching David Dobrik. They're all used to consuming the media on YouTube and now they will slowly get used to the fact that there isn't anything else beyond this platform when it comes to this kind of media interaction. The comedy sketch shows that are now slowly transitioning from the Comedy Central and someone like Julie Nolke, she is her own Comedy Central today. Dude Perfect, some of the other gaming channels when it comes to their interactive creative content, gossip channels that constantly gossip about different rumors, news channel like Philip DeFranco. This is happening. This has been happening. And the fact that David Dobrik is now bringing in his talk show on YouTube is just yet another sign of times where slowly over time, the TV shows that we see and consume through cable become obsolete and YouTube and creators like David Dobrik take over their spot. Let's switch the tracks and talk about Mr. Beast and the fact that all of a sudden, Jimmy Davidson found himself to be an owner of the franchise of burger joints, 300 plus strong. I spoke already about the fact that Mr. Beast was opening his own burger spots in this video earlier, but I did not realize the scale to which they want to expand. And now after listening to Jimmy talking about it on the Clubhouse, at a couple of other podcasts, hearing his manager Reed talking about this particular business on the Creator Economics podcast, I slowly realize that this is going far beyond just a one-time thing and they're truly building a business around this brand. Was there a plan at, at any point where it was like, hey, uh, let's like open up physical stores as well? No, uh, we never wanted to open up any physical stores, although now with the success, I, I think we will. We have like a whole marketing calendar in place of what we want this to look like for 2021. We may push some new products through Mr. Beast Burger's distribution network. We'll see, we, we have big plans for this. Besides the tremendously positive effect on all the local restaurants who partnered with Mr. Beast and now get to gain those revenues through the revenue share program and feed their own employees, you can see how this is the foundation layer of the billion dollar plus holding company that's slowly taking over the world. So many great creators on YouTube and other platforms reached that milestone of million plus subscribers, likes, followers, whatever the metric there is, and they just realized that, okay, I can just sell the merch and that will be about it when it comes to my diversification. But 
ads and merch is not enough in today's world for them to really take advantage of that engaged audience who they currently host on their channels. Think about the fact that the brands out there would die to have million plus engaged users who constantly every week keep coming back to interact with your content. And here they are, tens of thousands of creators who are at that status with different opportunities at their hands. And it's just a matter of them getting a little bit more creative, pushing themselves a little bit forward, like Mr. Beast, who is great. And the fact that he opened this chain of restaurants does not mean that they're stopping there. As you heard from that segment earlier, they plan to expand on it further. And beyond, they want to bring some of those traditional ways of like merchandise into this physical world as well through those locations. We're just scraping the surface of what is possible in this new economic world where the creators and their audience partner and engage together in their own individual silos. Now, this was not just a random connection, Mr. Beast and David Dobrik. It's not only because they're one of the top, most influential YouTubers on the platform, and not only because I just made a video about both of them in the past, it's also about the fact that David Dobrik is moving in a kind of similar direction and similar pattern to Mr. Beast, where he's currently hard at work on his own pizza franchise. Yes, we're definitely going and doubling down on that food business. And in David Dobrik's case, it's very interesting because Yet again, he has that engaged audience, and I think that audience will guarantee him an equal or at least a similar success to Mr. Beast. After all, Mr. Beast just sold his millionth burger or sandwich, whatever they might call it. At the end of the day, it would not have been possible without his audience. And someone like David Dobrik and his team, they know that, and they're gonna leverage that as well. I know, sometimes it's hard. <laughs> I had a somewhat negative first experience with Beast Burger, but ultimately, it's hard to mess up a pizza recipe. And that should also explain all those Instagram, TikTok, stories that you've seen of David Dobrik and the pizzas that they would constantly consume. They're slowly testing it. And yes, I'm pretty confident they're going to figure out the best way to sell their audience, who they really know, the best product possible. And well, if the pizza or burger restaurant business is not up to your taste, I know. Thank you. Thank you. I'm here every week. Thank you so much. They both entered the digital product space. In David Dobrik's case, he has a Dispo app, which is essentially the experience through the application of what it would be like in today's digital world to have a disposable camera with a film loaded in it, and the fact that you cannot see the photos that you're taking on that app until the 9 a.m. the following day. It's an interesting idea to me, but it seemed to be a very promising idea to someone like Alexis Ahanian, yet another person I made the video about in the past. It's crazy how this becomes like an entangled web of people, but Alexis Ohanian and his fund 776 invested $4 million into Dispo app. And now this becomes its own business that's slowly growing through that network effect of both the creator and their audience and the business side of the world. With Mr. Beast on the other side of the United States, he's hard at work on preparing the finger on the app too. If you're not familiar with this concept, well, the name gives away the purpose of this app. Mr. Beast ran this competition a few months ago where essentially the last person to lift their finger off the phone while the app was on won 20 plus thousand dollars. Yes, that was a competition and it's coming back with hundred thousand dollar prize this time around. Simple premise easy to tie into his content and the kind of videos that he's making. And if you're thinking about it, you should participate, but just know that the last winner or winners, I think there were a couple of them, had to keep their finger on the app for 70 plus hours. Both of those cases, no matter how strange they might sound, are yet another examples of how both Mr. Beast and David Dobrik, they have their audience, they know what their audience like, they have their own personal interests, and they entangle all of those together into creating different new business opportunities that I think more creators should leverage as the time moves on. Now, how does this help you and I? In my mind, this is just the beginning, and there are outliers like David and Jimmy who have their teams around them, who have the funding, who are able to gain enough of financial backing through their primary channels to go and create those teams around them to deliver those projects. But in most of the cases for thousands of creators who are out there who have a little bit of funds to play with, who want to invest in different things, and I'm sure have even better ideas than the ones that I've just mentioned, they all need some sort of operational business support. It's finance, it's accounting, as I mentioned, it's apps, maybe it's hiring, 
maybe it's marketing. There are a lot of opportunities for people who are not necessarily that good at being creators, who do not have that future being the next Mr. Beast, can still join in and have the piece of that pie by partnering with some of those creators. I started to work on this idea recently. This video is inspired by me thinking about different ways by which I can essentially bring a lot of that business expertise that I have into the creative world, which I clearly enjoy. I've been on YouTube for a while now, and I think even what I have in mind is still the infancy of what we will see as industry progresses and as more people realize that this whole YouTube creators, Instagram influencers, TikTokers world is here to stay and it's gonna grow much, much bigger. Do you think you will support your creators through this kind of ventures? Do you think there are other product lines that creators should explore and pizza or burger? Share your thoughts and ideas in the comment section below. Finally, I know I made some remarks Let's put it this way about the merch in this video, but even in the merchandising, when it comes to selling your goods or goods with your name or brand on it, when it comes to being a creator, there's still different paths to it. I've made videos in the past about Peter McKinnon or Jeffree Star and how they're creating products and they're doing it completely differently as staying away from your regular t-shirt and hoodie business. So there's clearly a pattern there. And also clearly I enjoy talking about this particular topic. So if you're curious to hear my thoughts on how this can involve or take my business perspective, which might be a little bit more boring for a video, but can be just interesting to discuss one-on-one, -on -one. well, hit me up here in the comment section, hit me up on any of the social medias I link, or even link my email on the about page of my YouTube channel. Other than that, I'm here every week, every Saturday. So make sure you hit the like button, hit the subscribe button if you enjoy this kind of content. And yes, I will see you next Saturday, 10 a.m. Eastern on this very channel. Beyond that, here are a couple of videos for you to continue watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.